Hey, I'm back. Um, I had to split this up in two parts because I just had so much going on here. Um, so if you haven't checked out the first part, we're uh, in the middle of the movie. I'm about halfway through doing a scene by scene analysis of American Beauty. And American Beauty is really about understanding the violence in the feminist movement. Uh, we're talking about um, the man, the woman through all these characters and how the feminine in both the man and the woman has been desecrated in our society. So through this movie, as an example, we're, we're reflecting that back in order for you to look at your own situation. Are you able to re relate or resonate? And then um, at the end, we're kind of talking about how do you heal that? And that's what this whole channel is about. It's about coming, um, coming to the responsibility that you have for your feelings and your actions, and then how to heal from the, the past trauma in order to not create from trauma. And, um, you know, I can certainly speak to that in my own life. Um, I'm sure you can too. And that's why I had created this whole channel and why I'm helping women um, realize their feminine power and realize how to create from a space of love and um, I know that there are women that while we might have the right intentions, we may be doing the wrong things. And that's very painful to wake up to. But we have the now and the future to work from that space where we don't have to work from pain. And uh, when I say not working from pain, it's not that pain doesn't have value, it's that it does have value. And it shows us, it's a teacher, just like pleasure. Uh, they're both feelings, they're both here to teach us something. So let's go on, get started. So Janie's parents are home. Angela wants to say hi to Lester. Why? Because of the attention that she receives from him. He sees her beauty as and is in awe of her. She flirts with him. This woman treats him very differently than his wife and daughter. She's noticing him. She gives him attention. And he desires to know her. Carolyn is in the picture. Angela is going to spend the night. So Lester overhears the conversation between the two girls in Janie's room. Notice how Janie reflects the same disdain for her father as her mother. And Angela knows that... Um, that Lester wants to jump her bones. To Janie, he is too embarrassing to live. So his sexuality is rejected by Janie. And I'm not saying that Janie should approve of Angela wanting to sleep with her father or approve of her dad um, flirting with Angela. The point is that men are completely vulnerable, vulnerable to women and um, women are vulnerable to men and both, uh, both want to be appreciated and seen. And I know that there's certain ways to do that with a younger female and there's certain ways to do that with an older man. 
So other than sleeping together, and we're going to get to that when we get farther down in this movie. Um, but let's keep going here. Angela sees the mom as embarrassing and why? Because she is a phony. She is whoever everyone wants to be. Notice how Angela does the same thing. A prostitute for the photographer. She thinks he's cute if he worked out a bit. She thinks he probably has a big dick. She says if he built up his chest and arms, she would screw him. So this is a target that Lester can easily win. Whereas with his daughter and wife, he never wins. So... <laughs> He's chasing after a feeling within him. And that's the whole point is as things are happening um, in your life, as they're being triggered, it's inside you that's, that's really causing your feelings. So it's not what's happening out there. It's what's within you. So they look out the window and Jane is on the lawn in on fire. And then they look to see if he's filming them right now. Yes, the two girls are totally like, what the heck? <laughs> Notice they assume the worst about him. Ricky notices Lester in the garage getting ready to work out. Lester is working on himself for himself doing what he authentically and genuinely wants to do. He wants to be desired. And he knows that this younger girl will give him that attention. He wants to have that feeling. And he's going after it. He's working out because he feels good. Ricky's dad comes in. He needs a urine sample. Ricky convinces him to do it in the morning. Ricky takes out a different sample for the morning. Again, we see how Ricky has figured out how to work around all these systems. Lester is dreaming. He dreams of Angela in the bathtub with roses. Notice how he feels. And uh, that's a, a good point because anytime you have a dream... It, you know, you may remember all the details from the dream and want to know what that dream is really about. But I will tell you that notice the feeling you had when you woke up from the dream. That is the whole point of the dream. Um, Carolyn wakes up to Lester masturbating. He admits it. Carolyn is disgusted by the awakening of Lester's sexuality, the realization of his own desires. They blow into an argument. Notice Lester says, the new me. So he's letting go of the old him. He's no longer ashamed or guilty for his sexuality. He doesn't want to pretend anymore. He wants to feel he feels she won't help him anyway. She says she will di divorce him so fast. And what does he say back? He stands in his power. On what grounds? What is wrong with a man desiring his wife? He's not a drunk. He doesn't fuck other women. He never mistreats or hits her. He doesn't even touch her. Because she considers him unnecessary. He supported her when she got her license. He says, some people might think that entitles me to half of what's yours. Some people, not necessarily him. So he's, he's trying to um, bridge the gap here and say, you know, look at what you have what you have in front of you and you can't even see it entitled based on the past 
entitles me. What's yours? Ownership. There are all different ways to ruin a relationship. He is pointing them out. I don't think Carolyn really understands how that perception, others outside herself, past ownership, leaves her in lack. She can't even see what she has. And that's, I mean, that's the whole thing with this movie is the understanding of the illusion that um, we consent to and that we can't even um, see it because we're so caught in that construct of our mind. Um, Lester realizes he has, he still has the built the ability to surprise himself in the present moment. And where are you able to do that? You're able to do that when you're not stuck in the past or the future. And some people are scared of surprising themselves. They're scared of the unknown. And it's walking around thinking that everything in every moment, something bad is going to happen in their lives. And um, if you're walking around with that fear, what's what are you being robbed of? It's just like the conversation with him and his wife. He's robbed of what they have together. And um, it leaves him, it leaves them in a sleep, in a fog, not able to see clearly. He goes running with a gay couple. Notice he is pretty honest with himself. He wants to get back in shape. He's just starting out. He wants to look good naked. So he's not li living for the potential reality. He's not living for the past. He's in the moment. And he's honest about the moment. And that is his greatest power. That's what he's realizing. He stops to talk to Frank and Ricky. Notice the violence of Frank. What is this? A gay pride parade? Lester asks Ricky about a movie. We learn more about Ricky's ways around dad's system. He has a secret stash and um, a secret stash of pee, and he trades that with a nurse for clean pee. Lester goes for the high-end stash. Never underestimate the power of denial. How interesting is that? The power of denial. Denying that something exists. Carolyn finds Lester working out and smoking pot. Notice how she's emasculating him. She sees him as misbehaving, not being a role model to their daughter. He throws it right back at her. Bloodless, money-grubbing freak. He tells it like it is. Then he goes to his job and he tells Brad that his job is masking his contempt for his superiors and going to the men's room to jack off. He says for 14 years, he's been a whore to the advertising advertising industry. He gets out with a one year severance package. I think it was like $60,000 that's coming in the next scene. He's just an ordinary guy with nothing to lose. Notice that, the power in nothing to lose. Caroline meets Buddy for lunch. Christy and Buddy are splitting up. He's too focused on his career. Succeeding is a character flaw. So we can see that Christy is also suffering in duality, as is Buddy. She doesn't understand the distance, lack of intimacy, which was shown at the party. Um, she took advantage of the lifestyle afforded by him, focused on his career. 
she was not impressed by him. And that's very interesting because oftentimes, if you uh, look at my other, I have another um, deeper meaning of pretty woman where we talk about bringing man and a woman together. And one of the things that Edward says to Vivian is, are you impressed? And in the past with all his ex-girlfriends, he was trying to impress them. And he learns that it's not about impressing a woman. A woman doesn't, is not necessarily, she doesn't see things the same. She's not looking for impression. She's looking for connection. Carol asks why they seemed perfectly happy. But he says, in order to be successful, one must project an image of success at all times. Hmm, the power of denial. That's exactly what she was doing with Lester at the party, trying to project an in image. And Lester was misbehaving by not projecting her image of the perfect person, leaving her in the reality of always having an unhappy self-image. She never can meet her own targets. Back to Angela and Janie with Ricky filming a dead bird. Angela asks him why he is filming it, and he says, because it's beautiful. Angela calls him mental. He starts filming Janie. She asks him to stop filming her, and he does. Janie notices that he has seen beyond her exterior. And she's intrigued about that. She offers him a ride. Angela says she thinks he will. she will be hacked to pieces that he's mental. She sees him as not perfect because he thinks differently in a way she doesn't understand. And he is not providing her attention. So Janie walks with Ricky. Then we go back to Carolyn and Buddy in a hotel. Notice how different she is with Buddy compared with Lester. She admires him. Does she admire Lester? No, she emasculates him all the time. So it's very different with Buddy compared to Lester. And notice the state she is in between the two. Lester is happy. He goes through the drive through He fills out an application. Caroline realizes what she really needed, sex. And this is interesting, too, because women often cannot correlate their needs when they are mothers. They let everything happen uh, for everyone else before they get their needs met. So that's the archetype of the mother. But at the same time, if she doesn't realize her needs, who is she being? Does she realize who she's being or is she so caught in the moment or so caught in the construct of the ego that she can't see that? And the, um, I talk about this in my coaching program too, where we correlate needs being met with who you want to be. And that's how you prioritize your life. And that's very different than running through your life right now. And just because you have a corporate career, you get up every morning and you have this huge task list, that doesn't mean that your needs are being met. That doesn't mean that you understand um, who you are being. 
And you only know that by how you feel. Buddy tells uh, Carolyn to go to to go shooting a gun. Nothing makes you feel more powerful. Janie and Ricky talk on the way home. So we hear the story of Caroline and the tree, which was in the last part. I said to, to bookmark that piece. <laughs> they had stray cats that drove Caroline nuts. So she cut down their tree. So what's happening there? They were misbehaving by Caroline, by Caroline's construct of the mind. She was distracted by that. And so she punished them by cutting down the tree. And what happened? She cut down that relationship as well. They watch a funeral procession pass. Ricky says he's seen an old homeless woman freeze to death. He filmed it. She asked why. When you see something like that, it's like God is looking right at you just for a second and if you're careful, you can look right back. What do you see? Beauty. We see Barb sitting there, stoic. Ricky comes home with Janie. What does Barb say? Oh my, I apologize for the way things look around here. Notice the house is perfectly clean. So she's stoic. The house is perfectly clean. So what is the reality that she's living in? She is even beyond Caroline because she is living in a currency of not triggering her husband. And she does that by... Um, acting perfectly she's trying not to trigger him in any way they go to frank's office if one of ricky's clients was short on cash and he made a trade with a locksmith oh sorry one of Rick, ricky's clients was short on cash and he made a trade with a locksmith his dad has a relic from the nazis it's a plate she doesn't really care. She wants to see the most beautiful thing Ricky has ever filmed. It's a bag. Electricity in the air. The bag was dancing with him. That's the day he realized there was an entire life behind things. This incredibly benevolent force that wanted me to know that there was no reason to be afraid ever video helps him remember sometimes there's so much beauty in the world i feel i can't take it and my heart is just going to cave in and she kisses him so janie has a pretty good day with ricky lester has quit his job and applied at a fast food restaurant with the least responsibility possible Caroline is screwing Buddy. This is a pretty good day leading up to dinner. Lester told Janie he quit his job. He told his boss to go screw himself. Um, he blackmailed him for $60,000. And uh, he keeps asking to pass the asparagus. Caroline says, your father thinks his behavior is something to be proud of. Again, compared to what? What is he supposed to be proud of compared to what? The perfect person? The perfect person doesn't exist. It's an illusion. It's an illusion that he is misbehaving. Lester, your mother prefers I go through life like a prisoner while she keeps my dick in a mason jar under the sink. And then he says, you two do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. And I don't complain. Caroline objects. Notice Lester hits the asparagus against the wall. He didn't hit Caroline. 
the point is that he was under so much pressure, he had no relief. And still, he, even though she's attacking him, and she is attacking him, um, she's attacking him because his way of thinking, men's way of thinking is uh, single focused. So he's not focused on anything else but what the conversation is going on right now. So he had no relief from Caroline. And even though she's attacking him, his defense is to throw the asparagus and the plate against the wall. He doesn't hit Caroline. He wants to change the music from the Lawrence Welk crap. Caroline comes to Janie's room. Janie calls her parents freaks. Caroline cries. She's glad because you cannot count on anyone except yourself. So she's trying to say that um, women are better off independent. And um, this is the heart of the feminist movement. You know, they come up with all these different ways that women can be independent. And the truth of the matter is that she has more power with her husband. And she has, is not able to realize or see how her husband is trying to love her, but she's rejecting it. And that can be very painful to wake up to that realization that the ego in your mind has canceled out um, the ways that your partner loved you. It can be very hard and you can very much, um, you can um, deal with it within, like that's a pain within you that needs to be healed if you're a woman. Um, because you don't want to carry that forward and you don't want your kids to see that. So um, just a little advice. Um, so Carolyn can't see all the ways that Lester does show up in her marriage and is there for her. She can't see the violence that she creates in the marriage. For example, the toxic masculinity in women competing Whenever Lester offers her anything, sex, to be her partner, whatever, he never wins. She competes with her own husband. She can't see how she disempowers herself. Her counting on just herself is disempowering her. Janie doesn't comfort Caroline. Caroline slaps her says you ungrateful little brat just look at everything you have here when i was your age we lived in a duplex we didn't even have our own house so we see how the trauma stems from childhood with caroline her lack mentality stems from decades she built her career in real estate based on that she built the construct and the illusion of lack all the way back in childhood and she's carrying that forward and she's creating that violence right now in this moment that's coming up to the reality of her slapping her daughter look at all she sacrificed due to her perception of lack how how is showing up in her marriage her relationship with her daughter janie undresses in front of the window Ricky is filming. His dad beats him for picking the lock. What were you looking for? Ricky says he wanted to show his girlfriend his father's Nazi plate. This is, and as he beats him, he says, this is for your own good boy. You have no respect for other people's things, for authority. You can't just go around doing whatever you feel like. You can't. There are rules in life. You need structure. You need discipline. So this, again, is the, the tearing down of the feminine, the inability 
um, for Ricky's dad to be soft, gentle, and vi and uh, vulnerable with himself. So as he pushes down those abilities to accept himself as he is, it's naturally going to blow because the violence first comes within. He first did that to himself. Ricky, you stay out of there. Ricky has been beaten into submission. And I think we can see that this is not the first time. Um, Carolyn goes to the shooting range. She sings in the car. Lester bought a car and remote control car. Carolyn, whose car is that? He traded it in. And then she says, should you have consulted me first? Did you do some? And then he flips the switch and says, did you do something different? You look great. They have the whole house to themselves. And he asks, when did you become so joyless? And then she says, there's a lot that you don't know. There's plenty of joy in my life. And then he says, what happened to that old girl? Lester loves her. Lester, you're going to spill beer on the couch. And he's like, so what? It's just a couch. And she's like, it's a $4,000 couch. And he's like, this isn't life. It's just stuff more important to you than me. And that's nuts. And the stuff is representing what? The power that Carolyn gives, gives away. Janie says, don't film her. It's weird watching myself. I don't like how I look. Ricky says, I can't believe you don't know how beautiful you are. She has been programmed not to see her beauty. She turns the camera around on Ricky. He tells his story about going to the mental hospital. At 15, Frank caught him smoking dope, sent him to a military school. He got kicked out. He got in a fight. His dad hit him. Then Ricky snapped and wanted to kill another kid for making him making fun of him for his haircut, his appearance. They drugged him up and left him in there for two years. So you can see how the cycle continues of Frank beating his son. I mean, <laughs> it's just like um, one thing after another. And the cycle it's a vicious cycle is the point and ricky is somehow finding ways out of it um whereas others if you look at his mom she's submitted to it she's been um submitted into not feeling and that keeps her controllable Okay, Janie says, you must really hate him. She says she would hate him if her dad did that to her. She already does hate her dad. Ricky asks why. She hates him because he's an asshole and he has a crush on Angela. She says that it would be nice if her dad was anywhere near as important to her um, as Angela was. And she's trying to say that he is psychologically damaging her. She says she needs structure, discipline. So notice, oh, and a father who's a role model. Who says that? Who's saying that? It's Ricky's dad and her mom says that early on in the film. So what is the structure about? It's about meeting a target it's not about being authentically who you are it's about the target it's about the construct 
and that construct is an illusion. I'm not saying that it's not really there, that we don't have laws and um, a, a target in society. I'm saying that within the mind, you're building that. And how does that serve you? <sighs> She's so... Um, she says she needs structure, discipline, a father who is a role model, not a horny geek that sprays his shorts every time she brings a friend home. So he's misbehaving by her bringing a friend home. And um, the friend is seen as more important than her. When really what's going on is that Everyone else has sold their soul to the devil. No one is able to be authentically themselves in her home environment. It's her mom and her dad. And he's just waking up to that. Um, she says someone should put him out of his misery. He asks if she wants him to kill him for her and that it will cost her. She says she has $3,000 she was going to use for a boob job. Again, to be the perfect person. Not a nice thing to do. Hiring someone to kill your dad. She says she's not a nice girl, then is she? Then she says she's not serious. Okay. And then we go back to Lester. Today is the first day of every day of your life. True of every day except the day you die. Caroline asks them to hurry up because she has an appointment. So again, hurry. What is hurry about? No patience. No ability to be feminine. And also a fear. It's a big fear. A fear that um, if you don't go quickly... You won't meet a target. Janie goes off about how she feels about her dad when Angela comes over. What is she cutting down? His ability to see the beauty in Angela. And she's also saying, you know, where's the attention that on me? She can't see the beauty in herself. He says she will turn into a bitch like her mother. And um, that's pretty much who trained her. Um, so he regrets what he says after she leaves. Frank notices how Ricky likes Lester. And uh, he digs in his room and finds videos. One is of Lester. Lester hears his wife ordering from Mr. Smiley, his new job. She is with Buddy making out in the car. Notice she says they're being bad. Oh, they're misbehaving. They're not meeting a target. Um, Lester plays her rules. Caroline is on the senior drive through manager's turf. Entitlement and owning. So that's a big thing with this, the um, construct, um, entitlement and owning. It's all based on the past. It's all based on a construct. Um, so you don't get to tell me what to do ever again. So he's standing in his power. And... Um, Caroline and Buddy go back to the motel. Buddy breaks it off with her because he's facing a potentially very expensive divorce. So he's, again, locked into that feeling of entitlement and owning. Money has power over him. Caroline, in order to be successful, one project 
one must project an image of success at all times. And then she starts bawling. She pushes it down, says, stop it, stop it. Then she screams. So we see how she is creating her own violence because she cannot accept who she is. And who she is, you know, is she's seeing a projection of success. So she's living in lack. So right now she feels lack. So she must project an image of success. But the underlying feeling is lack because you don't have to project something to be it. If you're being something, that's just who you are authentically. You don't have to jump into it. Like you don't have to, I mean, I think of like, um, you put on a big shoe. Well, the shoe doesn't fit, right? That's the same thing. It, it, <laughs> that's, that's what she's creating in her reality. Whereas if she puts on a shoe that fits, then that is that, um, that manifestation is her as she is. Lester is working out, smoking pot. Ricky excuses himself from dinner to deliver some pot. Uh, Angela wants to talk all the details about Janie and Ricky. Notice it's like the gossip magazines you see in the grocery store. Um, and Frank watches from the video from the window. What he sees is not actually what's going on, which is the whole point of the movie. Everything's an illusion. Um, he thinks Ricky is sucking off Lester. And Janie and Angela come home. Angela starts flirting with Lester. She is the only woman giving him attention. And he's moving toward that because he wants to feel joy. He wants to feel good. He's doing things that make him feel good. Ricky comes back to his room and his dad is in the dark corner. He asks, what did he make you do? He won't sit back and watch his son become a cocksucker. Ricky is like, here we go again. His dad beats him. And then he says, I'd, ra I'd rather you were dead than be a fucking fa faggot. Notice the violence. And then um, Ricky kind of goes back to, you're right. I suck dick for money. $2,000. I'm that good. You should see me fuck. I'm the best piece of ass in three states. What a sad old man you are. And Frank starts bawling. Ricky leaves. So what, what did Ricky do? I mean, this is different than previously. Previously, he was just submitting to his dad. This time he's standing up to his dad. And so much so that he's going to leave. He's He might not come back. His mom, Barb, is downstairs. He says he's leaving. She's holding the Nazi plate. He wishes things would have been better for her. And she is very stoic, um, complacent, controllable. The opposite of Ricky. Caroline is in the rain lis listening to uh, the self-help tapes. And it says, disinvesting problems of power and removing their ability to make us afraid. This is the secret to me-centered living. Only by taking full responsibility for your actions and their solutions will you ever break free from the constant cycle of victimhood. You are only a victim if you choose to be a victim. We all have the power. And Caroline believes that if she has this gun, 
She has the power. It's very interesting. Because she is so far into the pain that she feels. She can't look inside herself. She's looking to turn it on others. Just as... Um, just as a trigger. So she's going after the trigger, everything outside of herself, rather than looking internally and seeing how she creates that within herself. So, <laughs> um, very interesting. Janie and Angela are arguing. Janie says, don't fuck, um, just don't fuck my dad, all right? And Angela says, why not? Ricky comes to the door. He asks Janie to come with him. Angela goes after him. Ricky says she's not a friend, just someone to use to feel better about herself. So that's very interesting because um, when we look at Caroline, everything is outside of the self. This is no different than Angela. And then Angela attacks him. Janie defends him. Um, you'll never be a freak because you're just too perfect. So the reason that Janie is upset at her dad is because she believes her dad is seeing her friend as perfect. That's not the case. She's telling herself the story that if her dad loved her, he would give her attention. If she was perfect, he would love her. Like Ricky. Angela says, at least I'm not ugly. And Ricky says, yes, you are. And you're boring and totally ordinary. And she leaves. Frank is at Lester's garage door, soaked from the rain. Ricky's in Jane's room. Frank, where's your wife? And Lester says, I don't know, probably out fucking that dorky prince of real estate asshole. And you know what? I don't care. And Frank says, your wife is with another man and you don't care. And he says, nope, our marriage is just for show, a commercial for how normal we are when we're anything but. Jesus, man, you're shaking. You are shaking. We really ought to get you out of these clothes. And Frank is sobbing. Frank tries to kiss Lester. Lester says, I'm sorry, you got the wrong idea. Frank has been rejected by Lester. So um, the violence in Frank's mind is uh, about to hit a boiling point here. We go back to Caroline and her self-help tape. Tape. I refuse to be a victim. Lester's in the kitchen having a beer. The music comes on. Angela's in the living room. They both had a strange night. Uh, Janie and Angela had a fight. Janie's mad because Angela thinks Lester is sexy. And uh, one of the things he says is, you're the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. You couldn't be ordinary if you tried. So there's a, um, a construct. There's a difference between being perfect and ordinary. Because if you're ordinary, you're not meeting the target of perfect. Caroline is on her way, talking to herself. I refuse to be a victim. Lester, I have something to say to you. And Lester's about to screw Angela. Janie asks Ricky if he's scared. She thinks her parents will try to find her. His probably won't. Um, it's her first time. Angela tells Lester. He can't do it. He stops and um, he makes her some food. So that's also interesting in that um, 
in realizing that it's her virginity, he steps back. So if she, if she was sleeping around, he would have done it with her. I mean, that wouldn't have made it right. He asks her how Jane is, if she's happy or miserable. He'd like to know. Angela says she's really happy. She thinks she's in love. Lester is happy. And he says good for her. She asks how he is. And it's been a long time since anybody asked him that. He's great. And um, that's very interesting because um, women and other women tend to ask how women are. Whereas men are not necessarily, they don't get that amount of attention. So what's going on with Lester is that he's getting attention from this girl. And it's the same with her. She's getting attention from him. He's looking at a photo of his wife and his daughter when his daughter was very young. And then he's shot in the back of the head. And if you look at it, it's Frank's gun, not uh, Caroline's gun. And um, Ricky and Janie are about to leave. They see him in the kitchen. The second before you die, it stretches on forever like an ocean of time. He was shot by Frank. Caroline hides her gun upstairs and balls in Lester's clothes. And then Lester says, I guess I could be pissed off about what happened to me, but it's hard to stay mad when there's so much beauty in the world. So, wow, what a film, huh? Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in coaching sessions, I wanted to... Um, I can certainly help you with that. Um, I have the description box in the in the link below uh, this website, this video. And um, yeah, I hope that this helps you. I hope that you watch the film again and or maybe even just for the first time to really realize. And maybe there's some things that I didn't catch that you caught. Um, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thank you so much and have a great day.